Hey, what's up? This is MBA Joshua. For some reason, my voice is already kind of scratchy and beat today, but I'm going to run with it. It is also a windy day, so hopefully this thing will be awesome and not blown out and terrible. But either way, I'm sure it'll be great, right? So last week, I did a video, maybe it's the week before, it doesn't matter. I did a video about how to be more confident, and I was thinking about... <clears throat> What exactly is the advantages of building up your own sense of confidence? Like, a a lot of times we think that maybe not being confident would be better because we're more critical or we're harder on ourselves or whatever it is. But uh, in reality, um, the ability to be more confident well, actually makes dealing with failure and mistakes and those kinds of things easier. And this is coming from someone who is a, it probably still is, but was certainly a massive introvert uh, for whatever reason, like just super, I've always been super insecure, super worried about what other people think, even if I didn't particularly like those people. Um, Uh, And basically, I had had no real confidence, which is strange because I also was running around being a contrarian. So I was a kind of a difficult human being, I would say. And um, but maybe over the last, I don't know, five years, I went through kind of a really deep period of uh, of basically deprogramming my own bullshit. Um, I'm not nearly where I'd like to be in terms of the confidence thing. Like I'd like to be at, if anyone remembers when Justin Bieber was at the Anne Frank house and he, uh, he signed the, the guest book with something like, uh, Anne seems like a cool girl, I bet she would have been a believer. That's the level of insane confidence I'd like to be at, but uh, we're not there yet. So <clears throat> what's, what exactly is so uh, great about it. Well, what I found was when I was, when I didn't have a lot of self-generated confidence, um, I relied more on what was happening around me to get that confidence. So somebody might say that they like your work or you might do a good job and people notice. And, um, and you start to see like this valid, sorry, I'm looking for a spot to walk. You start to get this validation from other people. Um, and while that is nice, it gives you this kind of quick little hit of, of confidence, but it's really not sustainable. And it kind of reminds me of, um, of this Serena, what's her name? Tennis player, Serena Williams quote that I remember reading like forever ago. She was probably a teenager when I read it. And she said something about how, um, the the real confidence or like the the real ability to be a winner comes from still feeling good about yourself after you've suffered the loss that that's the real point not um how you feel about yourself after you've won is almost irrelevant um because one it is so fleeting but the degree to which you still walk away from a loss with a sense of self-worth and purpose, that's the real measure of a winner. And at the time, that didn't make any sense to me. It probably didn't make any sense to me because I was super insecure. Um, And so something like that didn't make any sense to me because I thought, sorry, I just hit my head, (laughs) because I thought that uh, a lot of your self-worth comes from the good things you've done, the idea of like winning, it's like based in actions that you couldn't just be and win and be awesome. And so, however long it's been, 20 years later, I now fully get that because when you start to generate just that sense of self-worth, the wins and the losses tend to fall off you a little bit more easily. rejections are a little bit easier. It's probably, um, well, it is no coincidence that a big part of my gross dead animal, a big part of my deprogramming 
came from um, watching videos of pickup artists um, who have to develop a massive sense of self-confidence because rejection is part and parcel of what you're doing. Um, and if every time you get rejected, it hurts and you let it reflect on your own self-worth, you're not going to get back up on the horse. So for me, what I've found is like um, the ability to go into a job interview that I end up being much more relaxed because regardless of what happens, my self-worth is not tied up in the outcome of that interview. When I show a design project to someone, my self-worth is not tied up in they're loving the thing that I've done and immediately wanting more of it or showering me with praise. One of the things that happens once you get to this point where you're able to develop a better, more internal sense of self-confidence or self-worth is that when you do get validation or praise, you start to separate it and you start to look at it more as data. So if I do good work and someone says they like it, well, one, obviously, yes, I'm happy. That's awesome. You know, that's like exactly the thing that I want to hear. But this other thing happens now, which is that it instead becomes, instead of a source of self-worth or validation, it becomes a measure of, okay, that thing I did was effective. And I know that it was effective because I am hearing this, this, and this from other people. That's a totally different animal than I must have done a really good job because these people love this. I got to do a good job next time. Like all this kind of like, without that confidence, you have a kind of desperate clinginess to the things that people say. Um, it's much easier to go into work with a really exploratory sense of process when you're not worried that the outcome will be good. Um, it's much easier to start a big high stakes project if you have the confidence that you can do it, even if you've never done it before, that you, that, that you trust yourself and you trust your process and you trust yourself to ask the right questions, all of that stuff. And, um, and hell, it's, it's much easier to go and ask someone out if your sense of self-worth is not tied up in whether that person says yes or no. Um, for, for me, as a creative person, I feel more creative having this internal sense of self-worth that doing a project like this, making these videos where I have to do things like I've got to stand outside on a busy path um, and I have to kind of crush some of that not wanting to stand out to do that and then I'm going to put it out on YouTube and I understand that well this is a good example um, I don't know how many people will watch this most of the videos I've made less than 100 people have seen it I would guess actually most of the videos I've made less than 50 people have seen it if my self worth were tied up in that that would be very demoralizing and maybe I would take away from it this message that I need a better camera or I need to be more interesting or I need to be smarter or whatever it is, or I need to copy what someone else in popular is doing. Maybe I do, but uh, as Grant Cardone says, uh, I'm so convinced that I'm right that even when I'm wrong, I'm convinced that I'm right. Meaning this is the path I'm going down. I will stop going down this particular path when I feel like it. But for now, these are the ways I make the videos. And if they only get to 50 people, well, cool. I hope out of those 50 people, 10 of them get something out of it that's really valuable. Um, but 1,000 people watch it or 10,000 people watch it. It doesn't change me. It doesn't change my value as a person. It doesn't even change the value of doing these. I think about um, the most popular video I've done, which is like closing on 50,000 views, which for me is huge. But even that, I look back on it, I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. Like 50,000 people are watching a thing I did three years ago. Whatever, right? Like, it's cool, but it's not, it's, I'm not going to let it derive my, like, 
I'm not going to derive my value from it any more than if I ate a really good meal and it was delicious and it filled my stomach up, I wouldn't suddenly use that feeling to determine whether my life had worth. Like, oh, I feel so good right now from this food. My life finally has worth. That's the same thing with collecting this kind of positive input. I like it. Do not get me wrong. It is wonderful. I want comments. I want conversation. I want people to share my stuff. But if you don't, tomorrow or whenever time to do another video, I'm still going to do it. Because ultimately, I do it for me. And because I think that me is like the most awesome audience in the world that gives me the resilience and perseverance to kind of soldier on even when it feels like maybe nobody's watching. But I'm not for a minute going to assume that that is a statement about the quality of what I do. Or the, and even more so, I'm definitely not going to assume that that is a statement about the quality of me as a person. Um, if you haven't watched the video, Three Ways to Be More Confident, I highly recommend it. Um, if you can embrace the kind of dichotomy that you can both think you're the best and want to be better, uh, it creates a really kind of powerful force and you have to train yourself to do that. If, like you have to train yourself to feel that way. You have to train yourself to look for positive feedback in your environment. And you have to train yourself also at the same time to be like, that feels nice, but I don't live for that. All right, that's the end of this video. Thanks as always for watching. If you're not subscribing, you should, because you know, this is the best channel on YouTube and it's only getting better. Thanks.